Let's yeah. see. What else is here? <laughs> uh, Fatal Frame, Maiden of Blackwater. It's a, I, I thought this was a new Fatal Frame, or is it like a remaster of an older one? I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's a new one. I'm pretty... I, as because I know there was Fatal Frame one, Fatal Frame two, Broken Butterfly. Uh, I don't know what th- I don't know if there was a third one. I can't remember if there was or what it would be called. But um, yeah, I think this is a new one. Huh. But yeah, um, yeah it, it, it's good to get some genuine good old Japanese horror. Yeah. Um, I, I love the designs. I love the vibes and atmosphere it's given off. Mm-hmm. Um, taking pictures of uh, of same concepts, same concept. Do taking the, pictures of ghosts. Those Great. ghosts don't like being on Snapchat. They're they're boomer ghosts. They don't want anything to do with <laughs> Snapchat. <laughs> I can't wait to see the ghosts doing TikTok dances. Oh my god! <laughs> it's uh, I thought it was kind of weird that they're showing this as like the debut for where they're kind of first showing this off. Uh, because it's not exclusive to Switch. They had a big splash screen where it's basically coming everywhere. But yeah. um. I don't know. It, it almost kind of feels like on ho- at home on Switch, especially if like if you're playing it in handheld, you can like move the camera around. That'd be cool. Yeah, right. Yeah, kind of. Maybe that's why I think Nintendo may have bought the the advertising rights for it then, because it's like it, it makes sense on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I've never played any of the other games, but I've always kind of meant to get around to it. I know they're not like super widely available, um, but so yeah, probably pick this up at some point. <laughs> Have you played any of them, Atma? No, no, I, I have not. Again, horror, not really. Not big on the spooks? No, not not. Growing up, I'm a little more, I, I'm willing to like try them now, so I may look into this if it turns out to, to review well and, and looks good. Um, but growing up, I, I st- mo- stayed mostly away from horror. I'm a platformer and RPG person. Makes sense. What, what would you say is your cutoff point for for horror? Can like an action game have horror elements? Or oh yeah, like like I love Alan Wake. Um, oh my god, it was so good. Yeah, so like oh uh, uh, by, by the way, just real quick. Apparently they're they're remastering that. There is some kind of listing. Ooh, we like to Yay. see. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> but uh, as you're saying, well, all, yeah. Also, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Alan Wake, Dead Space. Um, you usually, as long as there's like a little more action to it, like I, I think my limit is like I, I played Resident Evil Two Remake and nearly shit myself the entire time. <laughs> so like that's about as far as I can go. Like I am not a jump scare person. I uh, back a while ago when you know, um, he who shall not be named uh was releasing that animatronic game uh that was really popular on youtube um you know what i'm talking about anyway yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh i i tried streaming up. that yeah i tried streaming that and literally had to like stop the stream because it almost gave me a panic attack mm-hmm. because of the, the scares and everything and the way that was was made and so i just that's so that that's about the level um, have you, have you played have you played Resident Evil 3 the remake? I have not. Cuz I think you would actually really enjoy that one uh more so than Resident Evil 2 just based on the way you're describing your experiences because Resident Evil 3 is way more fast paced and 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 act and like way more actiony. Um yeah, to- tonally it, it's it's definitely it's, uh further set aside from Resident Evil 2's kind of approach where you're just like you pop in a room and suddenly there's a liquor in there and it's jumping at you. Uh, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Nemesis is scary as shit and chases you around Raccoon City, but still like it, it's just way more faster paced and you're like, you actually have a dodge mechanic uh, in, in Resident Evil 3. Yeah, um, yeah I, I might actually try it. Uh, Resident Evil 4 was actually the first Resident Evil I ever played. So like yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. You started off good. I will not be dabbing. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot's also coming to Switch. I guess it has uh, some DLC with it that's already been released. That's that's cool. I know if Mesa was here, he'd be going off. He's he's a big old Dragon Ball Z I, stand. I, I love Dragon Ball Z. Don't get me wrong. Like I love, 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 love Dragon Ball Z. I have seen Dragon Ball Z so many times over and over again. 
and I've played freaking Dragon Ball Z Budokai and Tenkaichi and all those stuff like when they came out for like the PS2. Um, huge. And I, I think I played Xenoverse 1 as well. But I think now I've just played... Hello, Kitty. Um, <laughs> I've just played so many different uh, Dragon Ball Z games that I literally, um, you know, I, 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 I literally have seen the story over and over again at this point. Also, I'm having serious deja vu right now. <laughs> I appreciate the Mona on screen. Up. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, okay, Matt. Yo, ow, oh, ow. oh, no club. Oh, there we go. Safe. I don't have, I don't have, I don't. Oh, wait, no, I do have cat. Hold on. Wait, you should just bring Ish, have him climb over your shoulder. There, there is cat on chair. Oh, cat. wait, is that an actual cat? It is an actual cat. Are you cat sitting now? Uh, technically, that- it's our, technically, it's our roommate's cat because they oh. adopted it. Yeah. Oh, nice. We has cat now. There's a cool cat corner right here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think I've maybe fallen out of love a little bit with, with Dragon Ball, where I'm just like, I really loved it growing up because it's just like, yeah, big old muscle dudes fucking punching each other. It's fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I still enjoy it, but I haven't really kept up with Super or anything. Um, maybe maybe I'll check it out if I get it like on a decent sale or something. But like, yeah. given the size of my collection at the moment, I'm just like, yeah, it's kind of... It's just like, it's one of those things, like, I've experienced this story so many times in the past already. I don't have any uh, yearning to experience it all over again. I I admire their ability to make 50 plus games out of the same story so many times. Mm -hmm. That that is an artistic talent right there. Be able to do that that many times. Uh, let's see. Uh, Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. I guess it's 300 recreated stages from the original three Super Monkey Ball games, and it has 12 mini games. Um, I only had one Monkey Ball game growing up. It was one of the ones on GameCube. It was fucking hard, and then I didn't like it because it was super hard. I'm just like, it's funny monkeys. Why? Why can't funny monkeys just be chill? And no, they were not chill. The only funny monkey game I liked growing up was Ape Escape. That is a funny monkey game. <laughs> <laughs> and any love for the monkeys and the ball variety, Atma? Nope. I I haven't played them. Uh another thing. Um, my my funny monkeys were all Kong related. So were they, were they funky whatsoever? They they were <laughs> funky, they were chunky, they were tiny, they were lanky. <laughs> <laughs> Ramen Nomad yeah. says monkey ball is pain monkey ball is life <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh that sounds like that sounds like freaking uh, I can't think of it right now gosh dang it it, it, it sounds bad, <laughs> it sounds bad. <laughs> um, let's see they announced should- oh, oh sorry okay. Stockholm Syndrome thank you there, there we you go, go. There you go. <laughs> um, they announced Shin Megami Tensei 5 it's coming out uh, November 12th 2021 all right. So, That's the one I wanted to talk about. Yes. Um, so, so uh, at least from like my perspective, I haven't touched any of the Shin Megami Tensei. I literally started with Persona Four Golden, went back to three, five, Persona Five Royal. I haven't gone. Persona One and Two don't exist. Let's just be real. Started with three. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I was talking to Mesa and I believe uh, Nexus about this uh, the other day. Where I'm just like, hey, maybe I'll jump in with this one, and like it's. Maybe this is distilling it too much, but it's basically Persona without the slice of life segments. It's much harder emphasis on gameplay, and it's a good time, but very hard. You got to focus on buffing and debuff, and you can't do this Pokemon shit where you pick four attack moves. You you got to buff, you got to debuff. It's very central to that gameplay loop. But Atma, you seem like the expert here, so <laughs> good. Yeah, I I so. I've played um, a lot of Shin Megami Tensei games. I, I played Nocturne. I put a hundred oh, over a hundred hours into Shin Megami Tensei Four. I put a whole bunch of hours into Apocalypse. Uh, I've played Devil Survivor. I've have Devil Summoner. I I have the Digital Devil Saga. I never got around to playing them though. But like I am huge Shin Megami Tensei nerd, and so Five is super exciting for me. Um, and yeah, it, it's Persona without dating, without all the school stuff and everything. It it is still like 
often very narrative focused. There is definitely story involved. Um, it's and there are like choices to be made and everything, but there's none of those pesky social links because usually there's an apocalypse happening, so you don't really have time to you know go out to restaurants and <laughs> <laughs> you got to get your priorities straight right if you, yeah. if you can't spend half your time playing the game with your fbi agent putting you on a, the sex offender list Wait. why would you even play <laughs> atma, what do you, atma what do you mean like in in majora's mask you could you could totally do that and you just go back in time and you're fine and the moon doesn't fall like, you know what yeah. <laughs> link is a bad person just like yoshi uh, Link commits tax fraud. He cheats the bank system so bad. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't even make sense because, like, like let's say day three, you have like nine hundred rupees, and then you time travel back to day one, and somehow they still have a record of your nine hundred. It doesn't fucking make sense. It's tax fraud. Tax fraud doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, Shin Megami, go ahead. Uh, um, and it, it's it's fun. It's like Pokemon. Uh, it is the the battle system is very much you have like demons that you uh put in your uh party and unlike pokemon like instead of like breeding pokemon you fuse your demons and make new demons uh and yeah it's all about getting good debuffs and the right uh elements um most Shin Megami Tensei games use what is called the press turn system i don't know if 5 uh is using it because as soon as i saw the release date i just was like okay i've seen enough i don't need to watch anything else um so i'm just going in blind because i already know i'm buying it so i don't need to to know anything else uh but the press turn is basically like if you use the right element against the enemy you get an extra action and if you chain a bunch of actions together, you can like do a whole bunch of damage in one turn because everyone's getting like two or three actions a turn to buff and debuff and attack and all that sort of stuff. And it's very like heavily gameplay focused. And it's really the the Shin Megami Tensei series was a series that made me learn to use buffs and debuffs and like every other rpg because usually it's just does this cost does this cause 9999 damage if it doesn't why am i casting it yeah right so it's uh it is a big person's uh rpg i'm I'm excited to try it out but uh i don't know i I don't want to say it's like on the back burner but i just i just have a bunch of stuff to get to uh, I'll probably dump five more Persona Five Royal playthroughs in. Before I get around. <laughs> you know what? No joke. I actually have uh, Persona Five Strikers right here. That uh, it is open. It is installed on my PS Five. I just haven't pressed the play button. But it is very good. I I played through that as well. Very nice. good. Very good. I, at first, I was kind of worried because it's a, it's a Muso game. It's. Uh, I don't necessarily want to say the word brain dead, but it's kind of like a, a numbing, just like go around, beat people up in an arena. But from what I've heard, it actually handles it pretty well. So yeah, it, it, it turns it way more into an action RPG and less of a Maso game. Like there's a lot more of like strategically using abilities and everything, especially because like when you pull up magic menus and everything, gameplay pauses. Mm-hmm. So you can like sort of choose what your next move is and everything. And so it's a lot less just button mashy. That's cool. You know, I'm actually noticing, looking at the case, I didn't notice this before. Um, they have every line in here on the box in Spanish also. Which is odd, but cool. <laughs> uh, they usually, I thought they usually have that. Let's see. L- let me grab a random case. Let me, let me compare. <laughs> <laughs> Another Japanese game. Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Uh, 1.5, 2.5. This is actually my girlfriend's copy. No, no uh, Spanish on here. Sora is a racist little fuck, I guess. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Zero to hundred. Zero to hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ! He no Spanish the power on the of friend- back of the case. Racist. The Just- power <laughs> of friendship for me and my people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why he's not in Smash Can he says. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Jesus Christ. 